Tonight on Q2, violence erupts. And I think that's kind of the thing. You know people in your life who are scared, who are watching this, to just know there's somebody who has their back. As war breaks out in Israel, a minister delivers a strong message in Billings. Plus, I'm Alina Howder. Monday may be Indigenous Peoples Day, but some Billings residents keep the movement alive all year long. We'll tell you more coming up. And the fight of a lifetime. So it's been, it's been tough. The community rallies behind a jail officer recently diagnosed with cancer. The MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us on this Sunday. I'm Kelsey Boggs. Our top story tonight, a simmering conflict has officially erupted into war in Israel. It all began at dawn yesterday when the Palestinian militant group Hamas launched thousands of rockets from Gaza into Israel while attacking at the border and by sea. Hundreds of Israelis and Palestinians have been killed and thousands more wounded, the deadliest day of violence in the country in 50 years. Those attacks continued overnight with an, is an Israeli hospital taking a direct hit. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu promised to win the war with President Joe Biden offering his full support. That war being felt 6,000 miles away here in Billings, with one minister saying this is a time to come together and focus on loving one another. Haley Monaco has the story. What has transpired is people refer to as Israel's 9-11. A surprise attack on Israel from Hamas militants Saturday has left hundreds dead and even more injured after innocent lives were attacked. Gaza hasn't had an election since 06, so this is really just a preformed terror group that was never elected or chosen or reflective of the people in Gaza, so that also adds to kind of the tragic element. MSU Billings United Campus Ministry Reverend Dwight Welch helped put the climbing death toll into perspective. If we were to do a scale to the U.S., it would be like losing 20,000 Americans in one day. So it's, it's a shock on that level, and it, it's a shock to Israel. It should be a shock to the world. Welch works with many foreign exchange students who attend MSUB and says it's always important to offer them support, especially during times like these. I know students from that region that I can reach out to. And I think that's kind of the thing. If you know people in your life who are scared, who are watching this, to just know there's somebody who has their back. He has seen firsthand how a tragedy overseas can directly impact people in Billings. I've noticed that um, Muslim and Jewish students and folks in the community can often bear the brunt of what happens over there. <laughs> It is just crazy. As the war continues to rage thousands of miles away, the Reverend reminds everyone to be kind to all. Some may know folks in that region and have, even have family who are impacted. And so I, I feel like as a community, what we want to do is guard against anything that would uh, be used to target or make, the, make them feel not welcome and safe. And, and also to express some solidarity. It's been the deadliest day in decades in the long-running Palestinian-Israeli conflict, and the U.S. government is working to verify reports of Americans being among the dead or those taken hostage. Reporting in Billings for MTN News, I'm Haley Monaco. Tonight, the Yellowstone County Sheriff's Office came together to fight for one of their own. Jason Valdez is in his 25th year working at the Yellowstone County Jail, but recently he received news that no one wants to hear. He has cancer, but as Charlie Kleps tells us, the community is now looking to lift him back up. I'm here at the Red Door for the second fundraiser for Jason Valdez, an employee from the Yellowstone County Detention Center who was diagnosed with stomach cancer this summer. He says it's been a hectic couple of months, but events like these help show him how much support he has. My staff is the backbone of the jail. The life of a jail officer in Yellowstone County isn't easy. It's a tough job. But for nearly 25 years, it's been Jason Valdez's life, and it's one he's come to love. And then you get to know the inmates. You treat them like human beings. I mean, we all make mistakes. He's used to helping others, but lately it's been the other way around. It was probably one of the worst days of my life, if not the worst day. We were just smacked right in the mouth with the worst case scenario. Receiving the devastating diagnosis was one of the most difficult days for him and his family. You don't want to see your, your younger siblings, you know, having to deal with this, go through this. But Valdez quickly found out that he wouldn't be fighting the disease alone. Friends, family, and co-workers got together planning fundraisers that benefit him. It's 
very, very overwhelming, and I've been very blessed. This is truly what he needs. He needs to see the people here that love him and are supporting him through all this. His brother says these events have made a huge impact on his brother's health. He looks great, you know, and to see him out doing things now, um, honestly, I didn't think he was going to leave that hospital. And as Jason continues to progress, he's already eyeing a return to work, knowing they need every man they can get. My goal is to go back to work here next within the month. We're short staff as is, people know. For now, he's letting the treatment do its job, trying to be grateful for all of the support and love he's received. For the people that have been involved and, and helped me out, um, my family, I really, really appreciate it. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. Storm Tracker weather starts now with meteorologist Ed McIntosh. You have a chance to check out a meteor shower tonight, the Draconid meteor shower. The good news is, is the sky conditions are pretty good for this, and also it shows up best during the evening hours rather than those late night hours that we usually see with meteor storms, but it only rates about 10 per hour. So you got to be patient. You don't need anything special. Just set back, get away from the city lights, look high up into the sky, and keep your fingers crossed. Back with the forecast details in just a little bit. Monday is Indigenous Peoples Day, a day to highlight Native Americans who have gone missing or have been murdered. But for two Billings residents, the work towards this movement happens all year long. In the state of Montana, currently as of today, we have 49 missing Indigenous people. It's an epidemic that Billings resident Charlene Sleeper has dedicated her life to. The impact that a missing person has on a family is lifelong if they're not recovered. It's why she started MMIP Billings in 2018, an organization dedicated to bridging the cross-cultural gap and raising awareness about the movement. But her focus is a little different this year. We're not elevating the sacredness of, of males within our tribes. And so I want Indigenous males, personally from my perspective, to know how incredibly important they are and that they are part of this movement. Sleepers hosting an event through MMIP Billings at the Billings Public Library Monday, honoring two Indigenous missing men, Hub Williamson and Robert Garrett Stewart Jr. They're both cousins. They're related. Uh, they were both 34 years old when they m went missing. It's an opportunity for both natives and non-natives to learn more about the epidemic. Sleeper says non-natives are extremely important to the work. Groups like MMIP Billings have given non-natives like Katie Harrison the resources and courage to make her own waves in the movement. This is a tragedy that's, that the whole community should be stepping up and trying to support and figure it out, figure these problems out uh, and not just leave it to the indigenous people uh, to try to solve those uh, issues on their own. Harrison just collaborated with Sleeper for an event through her nonprofit Sustainable Billings. And we came up with an idea to uh, tag a local artist named Ruby Hahn and uh, have Ruby come and do a live painting during the event and we'd auction it off and that money would be donated to Big Sky MMIP. It's something very much appreciated by Sleeper and something she hopes will catch on. We need to continue these conversations. Is it? is basically what I'm going on. We also need to know that non-natives care, which I'm well aware that non-natives do care. Um, I would like to see them show up more often. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. Still to come on the MTN 530 News here on Q2, making a statement. The Grizz locked down UC Davis in the second half as they secured a crucial win last night. We'll hear from the victors next. Visit. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 530 News. The Montana Grizzlies improved to 5-1 on the season last night with a hard-fought victory over UC Davis. The win was Montana's first over a ranked team this season. Kyle Hansen recaps a successful Saturday. Well, what a wild scene it was here in Davis, California on Saturday evening as the Montana Grizzlies went head-to-head -head with the UC Davis Aggies in a ranked Big Sky Conference matchup. And in the end, it was the Grizzlies who prevailed over the Aggies as Montana won 31-23 to to get a much-needed statement victory in the Big Sky and improve to 5-1. and one. This is a really big uh, win for us. That's a good Davis football team. They're a balanced, good team. They're well coached, and, and for us to go take that win was uh, was awesome. Uh, was, what a fabulous effort, offense, defense, kicking game for our team. From the start, and for the first time in a few weeks, the Grizzlies felt in control of the game throughout the entire contest. Even after fumbling on their opening drive, 
The Grizz rebounded to score as Clifton McDowell hit Keelan White for a 21-yard touchdown to get UM on the board first. Later in the quarter, Montana weathered three unsportsmanlike conduct penalties and had another fumble in the red zone late in the game as they were trying to put it away. Still, through all of that, the Grizz found a way to get the job done. That was cool to see. They just kind of locked arms and anytime something went wrong, you know, there's constant chaos on the battlefield and whichever team handles it the best, they're going to win and, and our team handled better than their team did. After giving up 20 points in the first half, the Grizz defense clamped down in the second and made it difficult for Davis to gain any momentum. We were just sticking to the same exact game plan that we had really in the first half. Um, they just had some explosive plays in the first half. In the second half, um, we just were doing our job, doing our 111, just like the coaches talked about. We were playing well. Even late, Montana needed a big stop deep in their territory to seal it, and they got that as Ryder Meyer forced and recovered a fumble. On offense, again it was McDowell starting at quarterback, and he played from start to finish, throwing three scores and for 243 yards. I feel like we took advantage of throwing for sure this game, you know, running with Cliff. You know, I'm just happy that Cliff is starting to, you know, be able to show his arm that he has. You know, some people don't think he has a arm, but he does. Fonts and fellow receiver Keelan White each had career days to lead the offense, and Fonts scored on back-to-back -back drives in the second quarter, including an unbelievable circus catch that put Montana up 14 to 13. I was supposed to be a back line throw and I kind of had to scramble and when Cliff threw it I knew I just had to dive at it and I tried to get one hand and I was looking at it the whole way and noticed that it was still up and so I, you know I just kind of caught it curled in you know I just you know the motions took over after that. The game against Davis was a circled game for UM heading into the season and it was an encouraging outcome for a team that had been 13 and 13 on the road under Bobby Houck heading into the game and they did it against a ranked conference foe. I mean, every game's a big game, but that's, that game did seem like a big game. And, you know, every win's a win. But, you know, anytime, like I said, you can go on the road and uh, get a win like that against a really good team and, you know, kind of came down to the very end. So it definitely felt, felt pretty awesome. With the season now more than halfway over, it was a big win on Saturday for the Grizzlies, but the path going forward doesn't get easier as next week Montana is once again on the road to take on an Idaho team that's ranked top 10 in the country. Reporting in Davis, California, Kyle Hansen, MTN Sports. Storm Tracker weather starts now with meteorologist Ed McIntosh. Want to welcome, uh, welcome you back as we take a look at this picture with Jim looking down the Yellowstone River. You can see all the colors starting to change. We've had some great fall scenes here at least, uh, in the last couple of weeks as we actually got a little taste of fall. It's been hanging around for a while, but the temperatures today very much above average. We're at 76, 13 degrees warmer than typical for this time of the year. Based on the 30 year average, we'd be at 63 and it was a little bit warmer this morning. Still cool mornings at 45 degrees. No strong winds today. And of course, we didn't add any precipitation as regionally. We really had a pretty dry day. Not much showing up on Doppler radar and a clear sky. Temperatures in the 70s. Check out 80 being reported from Columbus right now. We could see more 80s as we start getting into tomorrow afternoon low 70s across the eastern plains so Doppler satellite or Doppler radar looking clear we back up take a look at the satellite radar mix and the clouds well off towards the west we get a big ridge of high pressure built in across the west and that's allowed temperatures to warm up quite a bit today well we're looking at the 70s across much of Montana and Wyoming check out 80 in Spokane 87 in Boise this afternoon we're even talking about 70s here as we start looking up into Canada from Calgary up to towards Edmonton. So the heat is building in. It's going to hang around for another day. So let's push it through time and take a look at our forecast analysis. High pressure area warm and dry conditions for today. Cold front starts to come into the picture for western Montana tomorrow. Really doesn't have much effect during the day, but from Missoula up to the Flathead Valley, we'll see that front push in that could cause some gusty winds there. For us, just pushes the temperatures up and we'll see even more 70s and a few more low 80s. That was the front punches through as we go into Tuesday. Tuesday will still be warm, uh, especially early, and we'll hit highs mid to lower 70s over a widespread area. But once the front moves through, the clouds start to develop we start to bring in at least a chance of some showers. Tuesday sort of a transition day. By the time we get late Tuesday, Wednesday into Thursday, that's the better chance of picking up some rain and some higher elevation snow out of this. Maybe we're talking about a season ender now for uh, the Beartooth Pass as we're already looking at things being closed on the Wyoming side. So as we get in towards the week, we can see those upper level winds coming down from the northeast and that's going to continue to hold us 
Thursday will be especially cool. Some of the readings won't make it out of the 40s that afternoon. Billings may not even make it to 50 degrees. So overnight readings in the 40s. First thing tomorrow, mainly mostly clear. And then tomorrow afternoon, sunshine, 70s to low 80s. Then we'll start to transition a little bit as we start getting into Tuesday. We're still talking mid to lower 70s, still warmer than average, but a lot of these highs may even occur a little bit earlier in the day as that front starts to approach. And then we'll see the clouds start to increase, bringing in an increasing chance of showers in by the time we start getting into Tuesday evening. Day planner for tomorrow. Look for temperatures to start off in the 40s, then warm up upper 70s to around 80. A lot like today, but maybe even a few degrees warmer. And then we'll hang on to that clear sky as we start getting into Monday evening. Regionally, we'll be looking at those temperatures, 70s notching down to the 50s, maybe 40s by Thursday with area rain showers before it levels off for Livingston and Cody. Same situation around Miles City and Sheridan. A week uh, cool down as we start looking in towards the middle of the week. For Billings, here's the super seven day forecast looking at very warm temperatures tomorrow. Still about 10 degrees above average on Tuesday. The clouds start to develop, bring in the cooler, wetter conditions Wednesday, Thursday. Level off after that. Every month we feature a child in Montana who is waiting to find their forever family as a part of our Awaiting Child program. Tonight, MTN's Diane Parker introduces us to 14-year-old Brandon. In this month's Awaiting Child, we go to Anaconda to meet Brandon. He loves to play video games and playing sports. My favorite hobbies are Minecraft, Perler Beat. I like to craft like candy dispensers. I've been crocheting many kind of things. I've crocheted a little pig, a ghost. Am I a ghost? Brandon's an amazing boy. I've known him for about five years, and he has come so far during that time. Brandon loves to do games and crafts. The last time I visited Brandon at his group home, he actually had drawn me a picture, and so I have that in my office. More than anything, Brandon loves to connect with others and is looking forward to finding his forever home. I want a certain forever family that would take care of me and focus on me more, and people that who likes Minecraft like me. He's just really excited to have an opportunity to have a family, and he's just such an amazing kid. In Anaconda, Diane Parker, MTN News. Welcome back. Ed McIntosh joining us one last time. It was a picture-perfect weekend, but will that trend continue? For a little bit, Kelsey. We still got a couple more nice days, especially through tomorrow afternoon. Things start to shift on Tuesday to wetter and cooler weather. Could even bring a little higher elevation snow along with it. So definite cool down. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, it looks like it could start to move back up. We'll see the same thing in the eastern plains. Very warm. Keep in mind, we'd normally be 60 to 65 for a high. Some areas could be close to 80 degrees tomorrow afternoon. Afternoon. Same story around Billings. Then the cooler weather shows up for at least a couple of days. Okay, not too bad. Well, thank you, Ed, and thank you for joining us. That's all the time we have right now, but we'll be right back here at 10. Have a good night.